So here we go, y'all. Here we go. 10K by August. Maybe even beforehand, beforehand, this new warrior. Right. So if you're not subscribed already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Definitely. So uh, more content every day if we can. So we're trying to. So here's our next one, guys. So today, of course, shout out to Vishnu Warrior in the chat, the author of the book. These videos come from that book that's actually being published. Tournament Guidebook, um, Axioms, One Liners and Mantras is coming out. Absolutely. We're going to have a man on the stream as well. So it's your daddy, Tao, says King Side 54. It's my granddad. Correct. Tao is my granddad. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Uh, my my whole game is from my granddad, granddad Tao. So that's my son. He's like turned up. So, all right, look, check this out. So number one, um, this game here is actually in what year is this? This is 1962. So it's Mikau Tao versus uh, Hans Joachim Heck, right? 1962, you may have even heard of this before. You may have even seen this game. This is a legendary game, by the way. But today's title is actually keeping the center, keeping the king in the center with Tao, my granddad Tao. So how to keep the king in the center. That's what they're looking at today. Thanks for the follow, Chakra Bandu. So here we go, granddaddy, right? All right, all right, here we are, here we are. So I played Y here. Candy's grandfather game, correct. So here we go. D4. Now, of course, you in the chat, make sure you're watching and paying attention so you can answer some of the questions here. Make out to Candy, correct. So, in fact, here, you know, one thing I don't play like my grandfather did was a D4. Don't do it. I just don't do it. Right. But that's what he did. So that this is a legendary game. Here we go. D4, Knight of Six, C4, and E6. Right. And then after knight f3, b6. So now there's an accelerated queen's Indian and there's a, a queen's Indian. And this is the Kasparov variation or Kasparov variation of the queen's Indian defense is what they had here. Queen's Indian can be aggressive. I mean, you get the bishops out here, you attack the center. It's almost like an Owens defense or like a French in a way for against d4. It's pretty easy to play, to be honest, is black. And uh, white is very flexible in how he sets up. So, um, of course, Tau played knight c3 and bishop b4. Pinning this, this is literally all theory, guys. Very, very easy stuff. Nothing, nothing like out of the ordinary. Nothing you wouldn't know before, right? Or nothing you wouldn't like um, do on your own games. This is very easy. You just develop stuff. So bishop b4 and bishop g5. Go Canty, what's up, Dimple? Welcome. Bishop g5, it just develops. Easy. You could even play e3, bishop d3. Very flexible ways of playing. Uh, Shout out, thanks so much. No problem, JC. Uh, Jason, that's it. I mixed Jason and Jesse together just now. Thanks, Jason. And tell Jesse I said what up, bro. Yeah, so bishop g5, bishop to b7. So he's um hitting both the bishops, honestly, on the center and anything that's going around. So e4 can be played. Obviously, bishop takes e4. We're keeping some pressure here. We even play h6 and d6, almost like a nimzo somehow. Some way, right? Phantom Master Clendric, not a move. So e3, he locks the bishop outside the pawn chain. Pretty easy stuff, guys. Literally nothing to look at. After h6, bishop to h4, back and go, keeping the pin strong here. Bishop takes c3, so we can take a little bit more of a grip of the e4 square, which does happen. B takes c3 and d6. Now, one thing you do is after you trade a bishop, you put the pawns on the color of the same bishop you traded. So, of course, you can play that back a thousand times if you need to. Write it down, right? But we traded the dark square bishop. So black's plan should be to put the pawns on the dark squares. So this bishop is 100% better. And you can play moves like knight d7, e5, queen e7, g5, stuff like that. Thousand biddies. You the man. Much respect, brother. Thanks, Jason. And, yo. Yo, Bioprof and Jason, thanks for the bits. Thousand bits from you. And 200 from Bioprof. Thanks, bro. Appreciate y'all. D6. And after D6, there's knight to D2 from Tal here. Now, actually, that's the first kind of like, wow. Okay. I mean, of course, I don't play D4 anyway, so I'm not even used to this structure. This is just something I never get because I don't play D4. But knight to D2 here, um, knight to D2, is just, it, it is, in fact, number one, the first move from the engine. And knight D2 is pretty cool. I've never actually seen that. I have been here before. You have? Yeah. It's pretty cool to actually see Tau play knight d2 instead of the natural bishop d3 or even like h3, which are both moves from the engine. But number one is knight d2, which is crazy because he played, played exactly that knight d2. Number two was h3 and the third one was bishop d3. That's nuts. He found the number one move here, which is his knight d2, which I'm sure he's probably had experience here already as well. But knight to d2 on the board. And then e5 from black here. So remember, putting all our pawns on dark squares. 
um, when we've traded the dark square bishop. And we don't have to worry about like a queen trade because the knight's blocking it. After knight d2, now Ben Feingo is going to be mad at this one. F3. F3. And right there after that F3 move, sheesh, we're going to say thanks for the sub bomb, Jason. Let's go. Thanks for the five piece, bro. Appreciate that. You're hyping the chat for Jason, y'all. That's nice right there. That is nice. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. I'm spamming the chat. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jason. Never play F3, right? Yeah. Fine, go mad at this. F3. That's not a move, big fella. That's not a move. So, uh, but in fact, it is a move because it, it makes sense here. And what F3 does is actually it clamps E4. It clamps down on E4 and it just helps with what's going on in the e4 square you can't any you can't put anything here and you also can back the bishop up if you need to so all right queen e7 from hans here and after queen e7 white plays e4 so i like this move from tal here with bishop d3 castling coming right legendary game watch what's about to happen here after knight b to d7 easy maybe casting this way casting that way we don't know yet we literally don't know bishop d3 from tal and knight f8 all right, cool. Here we go. Now, it's up to y'all, chat. Let's start going through this one by one to see how you keep the king in the center, right? This is keeping the king in the center with Tal here. Now, of course, this is a very long game, and we're going to look at some of the moves here. You'll be surprised at what happened if you've never seen this before. It is white to move here. What do you do? Soldico, what's up, dog? It's good, bro. Jeff, oh, what's up, Jeff? All right, chat, white to move. Where are we going? What do you do? You have some natural moves you can make here, but then you have to think Tau. Okay, so think of your natural moves you might make and then think Tau and then rethink what you was just thinking, right? That's the process. Okay, d5, queen a4, rook b1, feels natural. So a4, wood pusher, king g3, stop. Queen a4 from Ed Wid. Queen a4, I like queen a4 too as well. A4, rook B1, queen A4, D5. Yeah, it literally, guys, what's funny is every one of these moves are possible and not bad moves. In fact, the move that is not even considered by the engine, and it's just creativity, shows you the mind of my grandfather Tal here, is C5. He plays C5 here. C5, bro. You, What was he thinking? What had to be going through his head here, right, to make complications this deep of playing C5? This is the move from the game. C5 and we live. Thank you, Woodpusher. Absolutely. Big facts. He plays C5. So I do see stuff like the file being open. There's compensation. There's so many things to think about. And this is what, you know, Tal was very good at is actually, you know, making complications and making you think and making you struggle and giving you the hardest fight possible. It may not be the most accurate, but something outside of the box, creativity and also approved by the engine because it's still equal right now. Even though this wasn't one of the top three moves, in fact, I tell my students this too, a lot of times the engine gives you like five different moves. And do it yourself. In fact, have many engines on or you know different engines if you like, um, but it's gonna give you five different moves, sometimes more, that may work in a position. Not all the time, not all the time. Every position is not gonna have five moves, obviously. But there's many times, especially at the opening, that you can go five different routes in chess, five different plans and ideas. That is nuts. And C5 wasn't really even considered, but after making the move, the engine's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's okay too. That's crazy. And C5 actually happened. After C5, mixed him up a little bit. A little bit. Hans was like, I don't know what you're trying to do, so I'm about to take this, bro. Like you're getting on my nerves right now. So he took on C5. Now, okay, your move, white right to move, folks. What do we do? C5 says Edwin. That's out, out of the box for real. Thanks for the follow, Kaz. Thanks for the follow. Why to move? I actually saw that move to open a bishop, but didn't think it was great. Right, right. Juggernaut C5, right. Why to move? What are we doing? Tal is my boy. Yeah, Tal, my granddad. Absolutely. Yeah, you can tell from my play. Tal, I play. Sack first, think later. That's what I was taught. D5, and we leave. And we, you know what? I can't believe I read that like that. Let's just take that back. D5, and we live stop d5 and we live i literally just dante you've never said that so i read it differently because it was you it's kind of strange d takes c5 bishop takes f6 d takes c5 bishop b5 d5 okay yeah 
the Xanax. Gwen A4 check. Here it is. Here it is. I've, I've only seen it like once or twice. Here it is. D takes E5. Make it. Mix it up. Mix it up. When you think towel, you think forcing. Strange. Mix it up. Mix it up, right? You know, yeah, when you're playing chess, right, with towel, this is what I imagine is like, you know, imagine in your face, this is happening. Somebody's in your face as you're trying to calculate. That's what happens because there's so many things that happen in the game. That it's just everywhere and it's mixing you up. It messes you up. He does a lot of attacking chess. You have to look at everything, literally. And it feels like there's always something in your face. D takes E5 is correct. And after Queen takes, now, shout out to you, chat. Queen A4 check. It's on there. Okay, cool. C6, he says block it up. So this move right here blocks the bishop, obviously, here. And B5 is being threatened. And we're still trying to get our king out of the center. Now, remember, the title is keeping the king in the center with Tao. He's going to show us how to keep it in the center here. So let's see. After C6, we just castle. Okay, time to get the, the king out of the out of the middle of the street before we actually bring the reinforcements to go to work. Knight G6, hitting the bishop. Okay, so the bishop's hit. Now, of course, I like to, uh, in fact, learn from the school of Tao is that the best defense is offense. So my bishop is attacked here. White's a move. What do you think we should do? And I was in chess grand has great games. That's right, J Dub. Knight c4, knight takes b6, says chess pawn. Okay, well, you have to remember, I think you're taking on b6 just to highlight the fact that this is something going on, but this bishop is defending a8, and that's not great. Don't block with your face. Okay, knight c4, knight takes b6, not a move. Don't even do it to yourself. Bishop g3 is a move. Absolutely does hit the queen. We have knight c4 from Ed Weird, knight c4 from Cook the Live. F4. F4 as well. That's face blockage. Absolutely. Chess pawn. 1000%. My God. Knight c4 and bishop g3. Okay. All right. Here it is. Here it is. Knight c4 for the score. That's right. Hit the queen. Hit the queen right here. Easy. So we hit the queen. Okay. The bishop's still hanging, obviously. So you're like, all right, cool. I'm just going to move my queen out the way. Queen e6, pretty easy. Now, remember, we want to keep this king in the center as, as much as possible. Any passivity or passivity, I already say that word, right? Any way of being passive, is, go, is, is he's going to castle and he's out the way and have a nice day, right? So you have to be aggressive. Tal here, right? Think Tal, right? So your first move that you should be thinking right here, if you're thinking Tal, should be queen takes a7. That should absolutely be your first move you should think about. And then the rest of them should coincide until you find something that works. So, white to move. Okay. E5. E5 all day. Open it up. E5 and we live, says Phantom Master Clinger. Hi, James in chat. What's up? Macron X. Was how good? Yeah. Was how good? A little. Oh, man. That's so funny. Alyssa 616. Oh my goodness, don't do that to yourself. E5, says Ed Weird. All right, here it is, y'all. Here it is. In fact, you are correct, chat. Pat yourself on the back. E5, stay aggressive. Stay aggressive, right? I teach students three threats or more in a row. So keep attacking. Just why would you stop the attack? And first, we want to keep the king in the center. After you castle, it's game time. I like to teach that a lot. After you castle, it's game time. What does game time mean? Go for it. His king is still here in the center of the board. Why are we not attacking it? So e5 attacks the knight. So, okay, equal or stronger threats. ESTs, my students know what that is. ESTs, equal or stronger threat. Just because I'm attacked doesn't mean I have to move it, says Hans. And b5 from Hans here, attacking the queen and the knight. And this right here is the legendary moment, the legendary game. Now, if you know this already, don't say nothing. Clap it up in the chat. Put some hearts. Put some some sabers if you a sub, right? Okay. If you've seen it before, if you've actually seen this game before, you can put some lightsabers in the chat. So I know, okay, you know, salute to you. Sabers up. Nice job, right? This is a great game. Now, if you haven't seen it before, then you're going to learn something today, right? You're going to learn today. So this game right here is very, very legendary. Very, very legendary game here. 96 check from Dante. Um, what was that? AAFR 96. We got D6. Uh, you've seen the guy made a video. All right, bet. Phantom Master Clendrick, uh, bet. J Dub. Phantom Master Clendrick saw it. D Shock saw it. I've not seen this before. Okay. He takes F6, Knight D6. 
96. So this is a legendary game, how to keep the king in the center here. So of course, I mean, you could play knight d6, you know, you could move the queen. But this is Tal. What do you mean, bro? I'm about to take this knight. I don't care about none of that. I don't care about none of that. Do you understand me right now? I don't care. He takes f6. He takes f6. Take the queen. I dare you. And he says, I will. And I will take the queen. You're going to have to show me, big fellow, right? I don't care that you towel, but you should care. Because this man just sacked the whole queen in front of national television and everybody else that was there that day. B takes a four. Bam. It's on the board right here. Keeping the king in the center. Remember this. After B takes a four, he takes on G7 first because this is an in-between move. Now, of course, when you take and sacrifice a queen, you need compensation. You need extra pieces. You need more stuff. And the reason for that is because you gave up nine points. So in return, you need at least the same amount of points. Or something very similar where you have um, some compensation is what they say. Yeah, I got less. I got seven points, maybe, you know, two knights and uh, two pawns or something. But it's king stuck in the center, right? Compensation. That's what it's called. So after F takes G7, I'm actually threatening the queen. Take a rook here. Uh, and the knight's still hanging, right? <laughs> or bishop's still hanging over here, right? Brutal game, right? So after F takes G7, he says, you know what? I'm not about to give you this. I'm pretty cool. You know, rook's coming to the center. I got both my bishops and a knight, and king safety is absolutely gross. I don't want to give this rook up. So he plays rook to g8, and we great. Now right here, oh my goodness. Who? Let's have a moment of silence right now. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, this move right here. This move right here is why it's a move. It's why it's a move, folks. It's why it's a move. Oh, yeah. It's white to move. Let's get it in the chat. What you doing? Rookie one for Phantom Master Clendrick. Bishop takes G6. Get something there. Okay, I don't know. Bishop takes G6. Rookie one. Bishop takes G6. We need a fancy silence emote. We have a silent emote, but we don't have a silence emote. Bishop F5. Rook F1. All right, here it is right here. Moment of silence. Here it is. And in fact, because we're, we're going through it now, because Wood Pusher said it, Bishop F5. And we live. What a move. Oh, my goodness. At this point, you know, you like, bro, what is like you actually scared? I mean, this is like a real like a life or death situation you might feel over the board. I mean, it, I'm sure people have played before. And when you lose the game, you lose the game. Oh, OK, next game. But here after you, you know, gave up the queen and did all this other stuff. You know, this is nuts. You play a towel. Now you're really thinking like, yo, my life might be in danger right now. It's what you feel like right now. This is absolutely nuts. If queen takes f5, knight d6, and we in the mix. Oh, my goodness. And now we're going to go into a game where we're just winning. King looking crazy. Look at your pawn structure, g7. I mean, I can go bishop f6, take these, go to exchange up. Bishop is gross. That's a pawn, by the way. This is absolutely disgusting. So you can't take the bishop. Right. That's just gross. OK. And where do you even move the queen? Like, where are you going to move the queen really down here? What? OK, let's go like queen, queen E2. OK, well, check this out. Nineties. <laughs> Ninety six is mate. That's mate. That's not just a check. That's checkmate. Absolutely disgusting. OK, well, how about knight takes H4 then? Just, you know what? Give him the queen back. Give him the queen back. Okay. Takes. Takes. Oh. Knight d6. King e7. Take this one. King f7. I take on c5. Or rook a to d1. Yeah, this structure is still gross. And in fact, maybe you could hold this. Maybe you could hold this with black. But all of that psychological stuff that just happened in your head, psychologically, he just knocked you out. Mike Tyson uppercut. And you just like, you know, no block. Here, go ahead, hit me, Tyson. Uppercut me, right? You know, that's that's exactly, you know, what happens there. So let's go back. Uh, how does he see? I don't know. I don't know, Ulysses. I don't know. I have no idea, right? This is insane how he sees all this, right? So bishop f5. He played bishop f5. And in fact, this is what happened. So after all this happened, he noticed what was going on here. 
He just said, look, Tal, you know, I got to get this stuff off the board and, and accept the fact that my king is still in the center. Now, anyone else, in fact, this is literally the main part of the video here, as I want you to learn how he kept the king in the center here. And then we're going we gonna to continue to go on the rest of the game. But what he did here is after, first off, he hit him with a check, made the pawn or, uh, you know, made him do a concession. Bishop's gross. We got out the way because once before we open up the center and go crazy and sack life, sack everything we know and do everything all nuts like here we need to make sure our king is safe so he castle then he hit him with a move right attack boom hit him with another attack boom hit him with another attack you see the threats more threats the better boom hit him with another attack boom hit him with another like it's back to back haymakers hitting 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 right just getting hit with haymakers left and right and it's very hard to actually stay up when it happens so after bishop f5 here you know, this is how you keep a king in the center. It's an attack like this. Now, in fact, this is the rest of the game. Knight takes h4, and there's a lot of game left, so we are not we going to fly through it. But we are going to look at a, a few more moves a little bit quicker here just to get to the, kind of the rest of the game. As Tao uh, went on to do something very nice, the rest of the game. The rest of the game is not as exciting, to say the least. What's up, man? What's up? Always double check. That Yeah, correct. That's one of many he's done, Double Dante. Bishop takes e6, bishop a6, right? So of course he didn't he didn't want to go for the knight d6 trouble and all that. So he said I'm gonna go bishop a6 instead, which is very strong. If you move the bishop, I take the knight, right? And if you move the knight, then maybe I could take the bishop. Tau found knight d6. After king e7, he played bishop back to c4, which is nasty. Yo. Yo, let's go. Wow. Wow. Sheesh. Sheesh. Yo, thanks, bro. Ben Fingo with the big boy raid. And Karen, what's up, Karen? Thanks for the follow. Thanks for all the follows, guys. Welcome, welcome. Right now, we're actually covering um, a, a famous towel game. Famous towel game. It's going to be posted right here on the YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it. Um, we're going to post it right after. What if Black would have given up the Rook on G8? Uh, wh where at? What you mean? Cook to live? Where at? What the heck? <laughs> bro, Fingo comes up. I don't know how he comes up with this. Like, just instantly. Literally, it's just instant. What the heck? Like, did you get that? Did it? Did or did that go over your head? Okay. What the heck? Talking about the guy that is playing this game right now. Legendary. Thanks, Big Ben. Appreciate you, bro. Have a good one, man. What's good, Ben and Karen's chat? Absolutely, Ben and Karen. Love y'all. Appreciate you. Thanks for the raid, bro. Thanks for the raid. I know he's just quick with it, bro. Off the head, nasty. Nasty all the time. All right, so let's check this out from the beginning. If you are new here, if you're new here, hit the follow button and actually check out this game. So we go on from the beginning so we can catch up. So we're talking about how to keep the king in the center here and watch how Tao did this, right? We have a Queen's Indian defense. And of course, while we're flying through these moves, is this is basic stuff. Not basic, but simple. Develop the pieces, make something happen. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, what's up, Sazo? What's going on? So stack and cheese. What's up, dog? Thanks for the follow. Okay, e5, f3. So e4, knight d7, bishop d3, knight f8. Okay. Yo, uh, yo, 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 mama, 96, thanks for following. No theory? Correct. Correct. Um, so, all right. C, uh, c5, and then after c5, takes, takes, and queen takes c5. Okay. Queen a4 checks c6. This is a legendary game. If you never saw this before, then, you know, you're welcome. Catch this game. This is a very legendary game, in fact. Watch how Tao just kept hitting this man with moves and kept attacking and kept trying to keep the king in the center at all costs. That's something you can learn from here. Castling first, making sure my king is safe before I actually go crazy and open up the center and like attack his king. I want my king to be safe and free of tactics. You know, even queen takes c3 is at, definitely check if I don't do it right. Um, all of Tao games are so good. Correct flip. Absolutely. So knight g6 happened and knight to c4 hitting the queen. Queen e6, and this was the legendary part right here. You remember this? After f, after e5, b5, and instead of moving the queen, the man said, hey, look, big fella. Bam, there it go. Takes on f6. I'll, I'll give you the queen. He takes the queen, takes on g7. So, so far, we've gotten a knight and a pawn for the queen. Four. But the king is in the center here. There's all kind of mates. We also pointed out after rook g8 and bishop f5, which was absolutely nasty. Legendary move here. Once again, if queen takes, knight d6 is gross. We get that right back. If queen takes, we, just, we didn't even look at this one. This is even better. Rook a to e1, you're getting mated. You can't even move the king nowhere. 
King here. Oh, I forgot. You can't even move that. I was about to say mate here, but you can't even do that. You can't even do that. So after here, let's say we move the queen somewhere here saying, okay, I'm going to snatch the rook. If you go there, knight d6, we in the mix. GG, start a new one. That's a maester. Everywhere is mate. Everything's mate. GG, game over. So after takes rook g8, bishop f5, he says, I got to give it back. This is legendary game. I actually remember it. Watt can watch several more times. Yeah, D Bass is nuts. Absolutely nuts, bro. This is ridiculous. Imagine, imagine this actually happening over the board. The emotions with the black. And let me flip the board. Like imagine you playing black like this. You're playing with the black pieces. Tal is sitting across from you. Very intimidating as it is, knowing who he is. And then you get hit with these moves. And you, you know, I give a lot of um of credit. I give a lot of credit. To Hans Joachim Hecht <laughs> for sitting here and still composing himself and not knocking all the pieces off the board mid game. Okay, let's flip the board here. After Bishop f5, in fact, what happened was Knight takes h4. So Knight takes h4, he took on e6, and he actually found a very good move here, still playing. Resilient. That's what makes very strong players is being resilient, keeping up and fighting, even though it looks ridiculous. Bishop a6 hitting c4. If I move the bishop, he takes the knight. If I move the knight, he takes the bishop. Unless I hit him with a check. Now, king e7 hits both of the pieces. So I need to defend both. How? Only move. Bishop c4. You take my knight, I take the bishop. You take the bishop, I take the knight. Very important square. And in fact, what was it? Boris Spassky says that the most important square of a pawn is the square in front of it. And that's actually in double pawns as well, too. But double pawns here, the square in front of it is very important. So controlling the square, no matter what. You take, I'm controlling the square. You take here, I take on a6, still controlling the c4 square. Pretty important stuff. So after bishop c4, Hans takes on g7, says forget it. I'm actually going to take this pawn. Clever. I mean, this guy was good. He took on g7, realizing if you take, I can still take this way. And if, um, if, uh, wait, 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 wait. Rick takes g7, right. If, um, takes... Then takes and that's really it. So and if I move the knight, which I really can't, then it's whatever. It's still a trade is what he's saying. Thanks for the follows, guys. G3 and G3. Uh, it's also rook take. Rook takes G2 was the next move. So G3 hitting the knight. There's still a lot of chess left here. So let's fly through a few moves. King takes. Bishop takes a6. Now after all that cleared, right? After all that cleared, remember the title is keeping the king in the center. What did Tal successfully do? After doing all of this, sacrificing, hitting that man with a move, drop kicking him throwing him off the building he still survived his king is in the center though and this is what he wanted and he had the rooks with the open files with smiles right looking good on the e and d files is a1 stuff double pawns here this is gross bishop versus knight this is absolutely disgusting now of course the engine says that this is an equal position but you always have to have the other analysis or the other um evaluation playing a human what's a human what, what does this look like to a human to a human, this look gross. Absolutely gross. Every way, shape, and form. You know, start a new one, right? This is 100% uh, phase blockage. 100% natural Cambodian phase blockage. Absolutely. This is gross. So, after knight at 5, rook 8 to b1. I'm just taking one of the files. I could have went here. I could have went here. You could have did anything. He went rook a to b1, f6, rook f to d1. Check. King e7. Check him again. King d6 and bring the king up. Better structure. Got the files, active pieces, weaknesses everywhere for black here. This is a disaster, but nevertheless, still an equal position according to the engines. C4, strange. In fact, the best move here was rook d7, a3, and h5. These were the best three. He played c4. And it tells you how hard it is to play, right? It's hard to play good moves in a bad position or a position, you know, where you're getting swung on. And every move, they hitting you with a haymaker, like Tao does, right? It's very hard to do that. So C4, he finally cracked under the pressure here. And he played G4 instead of taking on C4 here. Knight E7, Rook B7, doubling the Rooks. And he took on C4, finally. Right moment to take. Knight D5, and takes. And now we got, wow, look at this. Pure Rook in game. Well, uh, of course we are, especially if we trade on G7, it'd be pure Rook in game. But he said, uh, let's keep him on a little bit longer. So this is actually more moves. Let's run through them, guys, because this takes a while. It's like 50 moves here. Rook takes C3, Rook A6, check, and King to C5. Seems like a draw like, what do they say? All Rook in games are drawn. Let's take a look at it, though. 1, 2, 3 versus 1, 2. He has a passer. We don't, in fact. 
and our rooks are a little bit more active here. The engine does prefer um, white here, and it is white's move, so which means we can capture on f6, and he does. So now we can eliminate one of the pawns. Rook check, we can answer with rook e2, in fact, um, or even king g3. Probably want to keep a rook on just in case for easier drawing chance or uh, less drawing chances, and f4. H5, H3, take, take. Now we got two passers. It's two passers, but this got a, there's a lot of play. You have to be super accurate. Rick H6, G5, push him. Fast pawns must be pushed. Rick F5, defending, with also the threat of hitting him here. Rick check, King G3, King C4, and we hit him with the dub. Double. Okay, D4 happens. G6, it's all about who can queen first. And in fact, there's no way to win from here for black. And uh, this is totally lost, but it's very hard. It's still technique involved. We we'll look at the last three moves though. Rook h1. Um, after rook h1, there was rook c5 check. King d3 takes, takes, and this is very critical. In fact, chat, now this is up to you. This is actually something that happens in your games literally every day. So this is up to you, chat. How do you finish this off? It's white to move. And this is completely winning, but a lot of you will mess this up. So let's see what do you do. Amazing how Heck fought after mid-game disaster. I resign, not only from game, but from playing chess. Yeah, I understand, D-Bass. Look, hey, I commend Hecht for making it this far. He probably was sweating and probably like, yo, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to talk to nobody after this game. King F2, we got G1, or G7, King F3, King F2, King G2, okay, Rook G5. Or King F2. Okay. You guys, quiet G7 from Dante, stop. And that's a loud move, by the way. Because you, I mean, you know, after you make that move, you, you should uh, scream very loud at, at the agony of this disgustingness of this move. Very loud, G7, or G1 check, and then I'm just taking a pawn and looking at you. I'm staring at you real hard. Real hard stare. Very uncomfortable stare. Uh, after so uh, in fact you guys are correct here are the moves here are the moves yeah no no oh no my face right <laughs> all right so king f2 in fact is a move rook g5 is a move and the move that uh, tau chose here was just king f4 king f4 still wins but it's actually the worst of the three it's like the it's still it still wins but it's the worst <laughs> king f2 was actually one of the better ones but king f4 was fine and there, after uh, Rook G1, thank you for the follow, Philomania, appreciate it. After Rook to G1, easy move, guys, Rook to G5. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap there. Well, let's see the rest of it. Okay, Rook takes, King takes, you're like, yo, he's queening too. Wait a second, D3. Okay, let's see it. Okay, I queen, he queens, and then what? And then what, chat? Hurry up, put it in the chat as fast as you can. Fast as you can. How does this finish off? Why did he resign? Because he resigned at Rook G5. I see it first from AMC McDonald or A McDonald. We got Vishnu right after. Queen B3 is everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> I got you, Pirate. That's right. Queen B3 trade. Boom. Why is this winning? Wait, what? What What do you mean? Well, it's very simple here, guys. Let's just see it all the way through. For the beginners in the chat that don't understand, you, know, you can even, like, it doesn't matter how you do it. We queen here, and you won't even be able to, to get close, in fact, here. Everything's winning, even just queen B4. And sitting right here, push, and then I can make a waiting move. Anywhere, it doesn't matter. Any king move going closer, and then once the king moves off, we take the pump. So, w winning there, but after rook g5, uh, Hans Joachim Hecht resigned right here after rook g5. And this is again how you keep the king in the center with Tal.